How the hell did you manage to not make two men in one movie? <laughs> And then uh, yeah. I, I said, have you seen this goal? <laughs> oh. Well, to be nah. you, well, man's not surprised, bro. Wes, how the hell did you no, manage that? No way. When you through, did you go, oh my God? Yeah, like, uh, obviously, man's gone to Meg, the first guy. <laughs> then, when I've gone around him, the second guy, I don't even know how, but I've just seen it going through him as well. So I was like, right. Then <laughs> man just keeps dribbling. I was and to be fair, I was gonna pass it, but then no one came out to me. So I thought, no, let me shoot. And then it went in, so I just guessed. Then the worst part is it was a 91st minute. So I'm gonna be shy. Wait, take it in the corner, take it in the corner. This guy thought, let me just nutmeg two and slap it post and <laughs> It's actually oh. true, you know. I was actually late in the game. No, on the level, bro, I should be taking it. That corner. Now, that's just tip. I've seen Wes do that a million times, bro. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the 92. I'm here with my co-host Jamal Firefield, show where we discuss the news, results and fixtures of the Bandarama National League, a league that we're really trying to shine the light on. Today, I'm joined by a good friend of mine. This guy's been in the National League for several seasons now, you know, came for a Barnet, really made his name a Barnet. And then now he's taking his talents to South and United where he's thriving, you know. Um, only person that could not make two people at once. <laughs> 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 and then rap spins, you know. But yeah, I'd like to welcome everyone. Welcome you, um, Wes Fonga. Welcome to the show, bro. What are you saying, family man? Thanks for having me, man. I'm Jamal, what are you saying? No, pleasure, pleasure. How are you, Wes? How, how was, uh, how's the body feeling? How's the mind feeling? Oh man, no Sunday's the rest day. After the tough Saturday out, in Sunday's always the day to rest. So but we're good though, we're good, we're good. For sure. Um, if let me touch on it there, you carved your, you're carving yourself out a nice little career. Like you played over 100 games for Barnet, coming up to a half century at um, South End. How is that, how has that been for you? Obviously, because a lot of me and Femi have met a lot of players now at your age, around 25, 26, that haven't played much football. So how have you managed to maintain? How have you managed to keep pushing yourself to keep churning out these performances? Because in the National League, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, the National League's a tough league, you know, first and foremost. But um, I don't know, you know. I just think, like, like, I got into it from young. And then I just, it's just a habit. You just keep doing it, keep doing it. And, like, thankfully as well, I've kind of been lucky with injuries bar one. But yeah, like, you just got to keep going and keep going. You don't even realise. Time just flies. You don't even realise what's going on. And before you know it, it's another season done, another season done. Before you know it, you're here, like, six, seven seasons in. You know what I like? Do you know what I like about your career, was yeah? Is the fact that you've actually, you actually came up through Barnet youth team. So you didn't have the luxury of, like, a top academy or coming through an Arsenal or Chelsea. Mm. Um West Ham, you know, you, you came through one and and you made you made the name from that youth team and then you've gone on and you actually came through Kinetic as well. Kinetic, let's not let's give a shout out to Kinetic as well. And that yeah, Kinetic birthed a lot of footballers like yourself, obviously Miles Kenlock, yeah. um Joe Rebo, Josh Marja, yeah. you know. It's yeah. mad. It's mad to think so it's mad. Yeah, talk 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 to us a little bit about about Kinetic because it's crazy that it birthed so many talented footballers. <laughs> I know 
I know you man are I know you man are a mad close knit group as well. You're all still brothers. You know, you're very tight, you go on holidays together and whatnot. Um, yeah, tell us about Connect a little bit. Thing of Connect, yeah, it's that's one of the maddest things, like how like they do it, like the talent they produce, like literally, like I think that's one of the best decisions I've ever made, like me personally, like because obviously you know, yeah, eleven, like it's like college, football college, and obviously you know the African parents and that, <laughs> like if you're not in a proper club, they want you to. It's books or nothing, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I managed to somehow persuade Mumsy, let me go to this connect thing. And like my first year there, I was thinking, like, is man in a, an academy or what? Like, why is it so like set up properly? Like, here, like the training, the coaches, the mad advance, everything. So, yeah, I say that's one of the best things. And then in terms of like um, the players they produce, to be fair, though, we had a good group. Obviously, you know, Miles, we had a Reebok, Maz used to come. That's Omar Richards was there, a few players. like. So what they used to do, they used to play like, we was in the league and then we used to play like academies on like a one-off friendly, you know what I'm saying? And then um, we played Barnet, and then I think we actually got battered that day, like 7-3. Mm. But I still somehow played well. I don't even know how. And then... <laughs> Came in on a trial and then obviously one thing led to another, done well on trial and then signed for the youth team there. Mm. Yeah, that's good stuff. And then so this leads me to my next question, yeah. And Jamal, I wanna get your I wanna get your thoughts on this as well, isn't it? Oh. There's like in football, there's different like pathways and there's different ways people have have a career and whatnot, isn't it? Now where's where's is a prime example, like me where's is having a similar career to how we've had it like we may we may not we may not have got that crazy crazy move but you know what over the years we've been consistent you know what I mean and we've built up pedigree where where there's going to be longevity you know and then you have you have others that might might have started get the move and and then it might not work out and it comes back down obviously we all we always wanted to work out and we all aspire to, to play as high as possible, you know, don't ever get twisted. But um what 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 would you what what would you rather or what would you say is more ideal? Would you say longevity or would you say a quick move payday and then fall back down? What would you what, what would you say? Both of you. Go on Wes, you can start. Um yeah. I think there's not really a right answer, if I'm being honest. I think I think it more more or less comes down to the player's mindset, you know. Because say like, cool, you can start high, you're paid in, and then say what for whatever reason you do drop down. If your mindset's not right to that uh, get on your game to go back up, then like you're done. And then you can also flip it if you start down and then because you're, I guess, lower league or whatever, if you lose that hope and that drive to think you can go up, then you're done anyway. So really and truly for me, I don't think there's a right way of doing it. I think it just comes down to your mindset, literally, and how you handle the situation you're in. Yeah, that's that's a great answer, Wes. Um, I think in terms of looking at both um, ways, Fem, you said a quick move and then you you come back down. Anytime, I'd, I'd like to think if I did get a, the move that I always hoped for, I wouldn't have came back down, if that makes sense. So in terms of longevity, do you mean in the one situation that you're in or do you mean getting the move and have it, or staying where you are and having longevity? Yeah, so basically, you've played 100 games for, for, for Barnet, you know, uh, on route to do that at Southend United now, God willing that you, someone comes in and, and buys you, you know, because you're still you're still young, you still got the talent, still fresh, you know, mm. but you're building up that pedigree. Do you know what I'm saying? Whereas it's not that same situation for for many for for a lot of players, if that makes sense. You know, some people they might get the move, they might cut that down, but then they might go there for a season and then there for a season, but. 
Uh, but then, but then they've made that they've made their money. No, yeah, that makes sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, in terms uh, of yeah. in terms of the longevity, I think if we if we talk about Wes's situation, Wes is showing teams and managers that I can play a sustained amount of time. I can play this many games in a season, and this is what I can do over uh, a calendar year. Do you know what I mean? So I think in terms of that for me, I'd go for longevity. You know, proving yourself over a amount of time where managers and clubs can trust that you're you're going to be doing what you're paid for, you know. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of players that do get a move and come back down and for whatever reason that happens, but I'm going to say longevity for sure. Um, but again, for me, once again, we're on the same wavelength, we're on the same mindset. Um, this is a question I've got for you, Wes. Now, similar to, I've always heard the whispers about a move that fell for, for, through for you for whatever reason. Nothing down to you. You was always putting in the performances, but whether or not a club, two clubs can't come to a, um, an agreement for you not to get that move. But I had a similar situation when I was at York City where there was a lot of buzz around my name and I didn't get the move to the championship that was touted about. It was in the papers, it was on Sky Sports News. It just didn't materialise, yeah? But mm. how did you manage to refocus and not let it knock you to the point where you fall off? Because I've seen so many people that have got that move lined up and it doesn't come to fruition and then they just lose all composure. They lose their head. They're never the same player. So how did you manage? And if and if correct me if I'm wrong, I might be wrong here, but um I know there was there was always those stories around you, but how did you manage to refocus? Um to be fair, when that was happening, I was young, I was still like 21, I think, 21, maybe 22. So to be fair, I wasn't that mature back then. So I'm not even going to sit here and lie. Like, it did rattle me a bit, like, because, like, it was, I wouldn't say big, but, like, you know, when you come back in for pre-season, like, I, I proper didn't come back in, like, I was obviously trying to make it, like, happen, for real, for real. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say, I think what actually helped me come back is, like, it gets to a point now, you realise it ain't happening this window, innit? Like, it just ain't <laughs> happening. Like, what's, what am I going to do? Like, it ain't happening. And obviously, to be fair, I had, I, I've always had, like, good friends around me. So, like, my close friends, obviously, they know who they are. Like, they'll, like, be like, listen, just do it again. Like, your time will come. Your time will come kind of thing. Like, it's that patience, innit? Because obviously, you know, when you're younger, like, you just want to play, get a move, and, you think it's just going to be happy days, but obviously it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So I think where the two things for me was my friends that I had around me and then time. Like, I just came to a point where I was like, this is not going to happen. I can't just sit at home. Like guys are getting fit, this, that, and the other. And then the longer I wait, the harder it is for me to even going to be like for myself, like getting back in the team, getting fit again, when they're already going to be what a month, two months ahead of me. So, yeah, I just had to come to the to like the realism that it's not happening in this window. You've got to get back on it. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And Fem, I didn't even I didn't even throw that question back at you. Going back to the point that you made, what are you taking? Quick, quick move and drop back or longevity? So do you know what? Yeah, I was in. Um, this was a long time ago. This was in 2016. I was in Dubai, and and I, I bumped into friend of mine and we were we were just chilling chilling by 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 the pool yeah and he he's had the career where he became like a young star and he got his move and then he, he like didn't work out and he dropped or drop and obviously um he's now in the lower lower divisions isn't it you know and but he's older than me he's older than me so we're just we're just we're just sitting down by the pool and then we were just talking and he was like, look, Fem, like your career, he was telling me like your career, the way you're going about it is 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 a very, very good way, you know. You know, I don't want to compare it to anything because I feel like comparison is the FIFA joint. But he said that the way you're going about it is is a very good way and and trust me, be proud of of what you've achieved. He said, you might not have got the move, the big move or the big payday, but at the same time, 
you've played hundreds and hundreds of games. And if you continue to do that, continue to do that, you're going to look back and you're going to have longevity. And when you have those games behind you, for me personally, it keeps you in the game longer. That's what I will say. You know, so if someone looks at uh, uh, West Fong got uh, 20, 25, 26 years old, 150 appearances behind him, coming up to 200 appearances behind him, I think it puts you in, in better stead, you know. It's, it definitely shows you're, you're a lot more trustworthy, you know, in, in the manager's eyes. So I would say, yeah, the longevity thing is definitely very important because it just holds you in good stead and it just keeps you in, in there for longer. So although you might not have made, make, although you might not make, oh, 10,000 a week or at least you're making what you're making over a good, solid 15 years. Do you understand? Mm. So, yeah, I would say that. No, I think that's a good point, Phil. And going on to... Talk about longevity in 150 games. Yeah, so let's 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 move on to some of the games. Um, and throughout this whole um, episode, there's going to be so much conversation because whereas you're in the prime of your career, um, or maybe you're not even touch your prime, who knows? But me and Femi are kind of like the elder statesmen, so there's going to be loads of things I feel that a lot of players can pick up from this episode. So we're going on some of the um, results. Um, the early fixture was that Woking losing at home to York City. Um, Linnell John Lewis and Fallowfield popping up with some late goals. Um, and Dagenham Redbridge losing to Hartlepool. Um, Sam Ling unfortunately scoring that own goal. Um, Femi, how did you see those two results? Yeah, Woking v Dagenham. No one, I mean, Woking v York City. No one, no one expected York to win that, I'll be honest with you. Like, going to Woking, phew, Tough place to go, man. That pitch is big. They got big defenders. You, you, you know, you know, like they, 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 they keep the defense like they pride themselves on clean sheets. You know, and and and, and obviously York ain't had the greatest of starts, but at the same time, they brought in a great manager in New Orleans. You know, and since he's come in the door, we've been seeing York up and getting results. So it's a massive, massive result for them. It just goes to show what what they're capable of doing when they get it together, you know. And um, yeah, un unfortunate for Woking, but boy, big result for your good to see Lionel John Lewis um, off the mark. I know he's a big player for them. You know? Sure, well, I feel the winner as well. So yeah, credit to your city for that one. And the Daggers and Hartlepool, Hartlepool winning one 0 yeah, Hartlepool, they, they they started off really well, you know, but then they hit kind of like a brick wall, you know. Um, um, they, had, they had a couple of injuries with Mancini getting injured long term and, and they, they wobbled, they wobbled a little bit, they wobbled and they had a couple, couple iffy results, but it's nice to see them win again, like get back to winning ways, you know. Um, and however it comes, like, however it comes, that win, it comes in it. I said it last week. Man, when you when when you've had a string of bad results and that, you just gotta get back on the horse. And however it looks, I hear yeah. it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? What it's like. I hear it. Still. <laughs> and, and and it was an own goal, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> By any means. Like, I'm guys for Sam Ling. Like, no one wants to score own goals. You know, no one wants to score own goals. And but look, man, that like Harlequin just had to get back on it. However it looked, and they. They got back on it on the, and they got the three points. So hopefully they can they can build on that. You know, but I'm, I'm fortunate for Dagenham, but yeah. No, for sure. And um just going back to that York City, um, their new signing, Tyler Cordner. I'm not sure if you saw his tweet that he put out after the game. Um and I'm gonna read it out of here and I want I want to hear your thoughts on it. So he put great win today. However, I don't play football to get personally battered on social media. I play it because I love the game and I'm working hard behind the scenes on things I need to do to become a better player and help my teammates. 100% I'd hope for a better start. However, no one in life is perfect. When people go personal, if it was the other way around, you confront that person at work or wherever. If you have a problem, come tell me. I'm easy to speak out on social media. What's our thoughts on that? I'm going to start just because the social media game is a tough one, isn't it? Because 
how how interactive it can be and you can talk to fans all the time but at the same time sometimes it does fall over the wrong side and fans sometimes do get personal um for me i think it's one of those things like i'm happy he spoke out and i think it's it's good that players are speaking out and expressing themselves and letting people know when they they feel that they're being targeted in the wrong way but at the same time i think it's one of those ones where it's part of the game you know and i played at york and the fans over there are they're, they're solid they're solid they're, they'll get behind you and there's a small small fraction that will maybe go over the wrong side of things and and, and get a, and get say things that you might not like but What's your view on it, and and what's your, what's your message to anybody that feels as though they're getting targeted in the wrong way on social media? Has it happened? You know about it? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see the tweet like yesterday. I see it, but um, I don't know. I think everyone's different. Me personally, I don't even look at that stuff. I try, or I try not to. Obviously, sometimes you can't help it. It's in your mentions, isn't it? You just click, you see things, but. I just try to stay away because at the end of the day, like for me, that like, fans are fans in it. So they just react to what's going on at the time. Like you can catch a fan, you win on the Saturday, you're the best player, you lose on the Tuesday, he's cussing you, this, that, and the third. So sure. my best thing is just don't even like I try not to get involved with all that kind of stuff anyway. Like literally, unless it's like staring me in the face, it's in my mentions or I accidentally come across it. I just really try just to stay away because, and the thing is, he is right. If it was a different kind of job, you can handle it in a different way. Do you know what I'm saying? But because of the game we're in, you, you, there's only so much you could do. Your hands are tied, so best not even just, best not even get too involved because there's only so much you can do anyway. So what's the point of even, you know what I'm saying? And I think, yeah. and I think that there's two, sorry, Fem, just before you go, there's two ways of looking at that last part about, if you confront a whether uh, you'd have a problem, come tell. I don't. I know some people have said it seems as though like he's offering people out for a fight, but I think there's other people that are saying that he's actually just saying like let's have a conversation and we can yeah. talk about it through that way. So I don't want to say, oh yeah, he's trying to off people, and I don't like I don't want to. I just want a disclaimer that we're not trying to say he's trying to do that, but um, I just want to clear that bit up. But Femi, how about you? It's it's it's, it's tricky because. Um... As as well, there's there, there's two perspectives in it now. Now, as a footballer, you need to understand that fans are fans, and York is a big club. You know, York is a big club, and I'll be lying if I said that I didn't experience both sides when I was at York City. Um, with when I'm doing well, the fans are raving about me, and then when it's not going so well, when it's not going so well, the that are cussing me out, you know. So, but that's what happens when you play for a club of that magnitude, you know. They just, they just, and especially up north, man, they love football. They love football, <laughs> you know. So, mm-hmm. so they're watching you and they're talking about you every minute, every minute of every day, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but as as a as a footballer, I would say like we all know what how we need to handle these things, and that we've been taught it. They come into our club to tell us like. Yo, we just gotta try and ignore it, um, like pay no mind to it. Because at the end of the day, it's 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 white noise, isn't it? It's noise. Like it's like it's not really. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Ha- it shouldn't affect what you do. They're gonna talk. You know what I mean? Mm. So bad. They're gonna comment anyway. Just like Wes said, isn't it? So I thought like I, I I take the same approach as Wes. If I'm being honest with you, as a footballer. But then there's the other stance as a human being now. Mm. And as a human being, let's just have it right. You all know how you're talking about certain people, man. (laughs) 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 Think about it, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? We're dealing with humans, isn't it? Yeah. We're dealing with humans. Uh, Be a bit mindful that you're dealing with a human being. Honestly. Like, and and Bro, like, look, myself, myself, Wes, and I can speak for Wes. We're from, you know, we're from the gutter, bro. We, we, can, handle, we can handle that, innit? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Wes, I'm being real, innit? Like, we no, can, facts, facts. Come from the same facts. area as me, you know? Facts. We can handle that. But when you're dealing with human beings, you've got to be mindful that, look, they, they might not be able to, it might be too much. 
So I understand why he's gone on Twitter and tweeted that because it might be too much. And at the, at the same time, remember I said York City is a big club, you know. So I don't even knock him for saying what he said. You know, he, it, it might have been too much, and, and humans are emotional. So I've got I've got no problem with him tweeting that. I just feel like, yeah, um, fans maybe just be a bit more mindful of what you say because this guy could turn around next week or Tuesday in three days' time and score the winner. You know. For sure, for sure, for me, I, I echo that. Um, my, if I was to speak to Tyler, my advice would be keep your head down, block out the noise, um, and get back to what you was doing at Aldershot that got you that move in the first place, you know. Um, like he's a good player. Centre-half that pops up with goals are few and far between in our league. So, And if and if he's watching, like, chat to Paddy, chat to um, Scott Barrow, chat to Lenny. Those guys have been at big clubs and had to handle... The, the the stuff that's thrown at them when things are going well. And if anyone that, that can get you through that, it's those guys, man. But moving on, um, we're going to go on to the Eastley, um, Eastley beating Kiddy. Um, and I think Kiddy have had a tough, tough first 10 games uh, since, since they've come up in the league. Um, obviously, they went 1-0 up through um, McDonough, but Paul McCallum popped out of a brace. And again, Eastley were the team that lost 6-0 a couple of weeks ago, let's not forget. So they're probably still hurting from that. So they're not trying to go into games and uh, and lose any face and get embarrassed anymore. So that's not that's not a tough loss. And I think the middle will come good. There's no one better at the helm than um, Russell Penn, who got them promoted. Um, and then obviously Wes's old team, drawing with a good Halifax side at home. Um, you would have expected Nick Kabamba to score that game, but he didn't. Um, losing a bit of ground in the goal scoring race um, but coming on to the Altrinham which I think is the game of the week Wes 6-1 they beat Ebsfleet um, Con Clark and Bain scoring a brace and then David Newby and Donawa also scoring how did you see that game it must because I, I check all the fixtures as soon as I, I get in the change room so what did you first think when you saw that one to be fair it's had surprise because Obviously, we ain't played um Street yet, but I'm hearing good things about them. That like, they got obviously thick striker apparently, but then obviously one of my close friends, um Justin Amaluza, plays for them. So obviously we obviously talk weekly and that, uh, and he tells me he he tells me that like, well if you catch them on the wrong day, it could get messy. Like they're very good going forward to play. I like Justin. Tries to play. I like Justin. <laughs> I like him. He's he's been telling me that. Um, yeah, so apparently they're just one of them teams they try to obviously play like nice stuff and that. So I guess I'm surprised, but not too surprised that like, if you play that way, very attacking, you're going to get that day where all them shots and chances eventually go in. That's probably, that was probably it yesterday. So that doesn't surprise me too. Sure. Femi, what, was, what did Justin say to us that day we played them? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> He's, he's a funny kid. He's a good player. Very, very good. funny. Very funny. You, 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 you was trash talking with Jamal. He was like, yo, if I'm back, you're going to put me on beyond the 92. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love the confidence, man. I love the confidence. Uh, <laughs> he didn't get back. He didn't get back. So I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. <laughs> and that boy can run, you know, with the ball, you know. Quick and strong, man. 75 minutes, well. man. Driving with the ball, I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, he's he's a he's a man. You, you have to double up with him for sure. He's a player that if you give him enough room, he's gonna create some magic, man. Yeah. Uh, but Femi, what about Oldham? Seems like they're getting they're getting ticking. Um, they beat Oxford four 0 at home. Dickinson scored a brace. Um, that man Norwood, who they brought to the place, scoring goal. I know he's on the bench a couple of days ago, which was a surprise. Um, and Green. Obviously, he popped up for a goal again. Um, and then our old friend Gus down at Solihull, they drew 1 1 with Bromley. Um, Craig scored and Carrick scored for uh, Solihull. So, how did you see those two fixtures? Um, I'll, I'll start with the Oldham game first. Um, it, 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 life, life, is, life is crazy and life works, man. It's like your manager goes and now you get two wins on the bounce, six from six, isn't it? it it's, mm. it's, it's mad, but. I've always said, like, Oldham have got the personnel in the building 
to be a good team. I don't think it's a case of them trying to recruit new players and whatnot. What's in their building is more than good enough. And it, it's, it's, it's starting to show in it. Like maybe hopefully it continues, but it's starting to show that what they've got is good enough. And you know what, yeah, um, being at home, Oxford coming to Oldham a big ground, and I know that Oxford have had have had a nice little, I think six game unbeaten run, and a nice little little six game unbeaten run. Like, but going to Oldham now, and when you're coming from the Conference South, it's like. Could be a little bit overwhelming if I'm being honest with you. You you know what I mean. And when you, the fans are getting behind you, making noise and it's a massive stadium and whatnot, it might have been. I can just imagine the game being a little bit too much for them, you know. And 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 the ground just swallowing swallowing them up, you know. But um, it, they'll they'll learn from it. They'll learn quick from it. Oxford are a good team. They're a really good team. So I'm sure that they'll be like, all right, cool. We've experienced that. All right, next time we know how to approach that type of game, you know. But um, yeah, credit to Oldham for 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 getting six points from six. And yeah, Dickinson with the left foot bangers, you know. Yeah, they're, they're doing their thing. Touch on that point you said there for me about um, a new manager comes in and uh, a team gets starts winning. Do you have any stories or you wears where new managers come in or a football story that you can kind of link to that? Because I remember I was at a club once and the manager got sacked. But during that run, I was injured and I was due to come back on the Saturday, but he got sacked, sorry, on the Monday, but he got sacked on the Sunday. So then obviously a couple of days later, the assistants come back to the training ground, see me training. And I've overheard him say, oh yeah, you see it's players like that that got us to sack. Didn't want to play for us, but now we're out the door. He's he, he's fit. Obviously, that wasn't true. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Very funny, yeah. So <laughs> I've heard it, and I've been like, at, at my young age, I think if I was the age now, I might have confronted him and said, put him right and said, no, I was always meant to come back at this time. But um, do you have any? Do you guys have any stories like that that, that you can tell the, tell the listeners? <laughs> do you know what it is, you are, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I've seen man do that. The injured, oh, yeah. I want me. I want to do it. I've seen it as well. To be fair, I've seen it as well. I've seen it. As well. The club was going for a tough time. I was out for three weeks. The three weeks are up, and I was back in. But I've seen Fem. I know what you're talking about. I've seen man see the result, see the way the team are going. Be like, nah, I don't want no part. <laughs> no, I'm back. Where's this bad? I've seen it, bro. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Oh, how about you guys, Fem? I know you got some stories for us, man. Yeah, it's like, do you know what it's like? It's like when there's when there's change and everyone's just trying to prove because like the manager, the assistant, I know the assistants took over all of them, but there are two different people in it. So it's almost like I get a second chance. If I haven't been in the team, this is my opportunity to get in the team. You know, and and players that have been in the team, they're like, all right, I need to. I need to step my game up to make sure I stay in this team. I might have been comfy, you, you, you know? So it's it's one of those ones where when just someone else is at the helm, it just brings a different energy because everyone's just starting from square square one again and just trying to prove themselves. And, and I've experienced it in my career. Um, like when I signed for York in 2014, Nigel Wolverton signed me by like four games in. Four games in. Hey, he was my replacement, you know. Is it? Yeah, hey, where's imagine? He gave me a pay up and then brought Femi in. <laughs> <laughs> and bought the same player. My experience was, you know, I'm being honest with you, that was a nightmare of two years. Um, I, I, I don't mind saying it. But like he's come in and like four games, four games in to the season, he's left. I should have read the script if I'm being honest with you. Now that's how the next two years is gonna go down. <laughs> you know, you know. So it was just the case of like um a new manager coming in, and I remember like everyone just having to prove themselves and whatnot. And and, and yeah, like over it was weird because with my experience, it was weird because when the new manager came in, he played me, but then along the way he realized, oh, I'm not for him. He transfer listed me and then he started playing me again. <laughs> and then he got sacked. 
and then another one come in. Like, do, 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 do you know what I mean? Um, it was a weird experience. So I can't really compare it to what's happening at, at Oldham, but I do know that the energy, what I can compare is the energy, like, when a new guy comes in, the energy is up. Everyone's on it every day in training. The, the man that will that will do the minimals in training are now talking and, <laughs> and then you're like, bro. Like <laughs> that's acting brand new. Yeah, where'd you get them legs from? Like <laughs> you know the ones. So <laughs> so yeah, like um, yeah, we all know how it is. We will, we've all been in this game for some time now. We all know how it is, but it's good to see that that. Because that sometimes, at the same time, I know I'm rambling, but at the same time, that's what an environment might need sometimes. It might need a fresh change. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm. Yeah, so that's that's what's probably happened to Oldham. Wes, I want to talk to you about um, a team that I know you're enjoying. I know this, a silky, smooth, Gateshead side that I just... They're actually taking a mick at them because they won 3-0 again, like they did in midweek. They beat uh, Maidenhead. Dean Anger's up to nine now. He's got another brace. And Harris, uh, Ed Harris popped up with another goal. That's two in two. Um, what are you seeing from Gateshead right now? And obviously, do you, are you enjoying it? Um, with them, I think, obviously, they've had this philosophy like, this year and last year. And I think this year now, like, you know, you've been doing something now for 12 months, so now you're really starting to see, like, what they've been trying to do. And I think they've, started, they've obviously got the pieces they wanted in the summer, and now you're really starting to see, like, what they're about. Like, I think they had that goal that was, like, 30 certain passes. I just see it on my tier, I watched it, and I was like, oh, my days. Like, fair play to them. Where's, 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 where's? For the <laughs> older generation, please explain what a TO is, please. <laughs> oh, timeline, timeline on Twitter. Oh, okay. sir, sir, sir. <laughs> I see it on my timeline on Twitter. I got sir. that one. Them, I got that one, though. I knew that one. <laughs> I got that one. Yeah, it's a biggest timeline. I think it's timeline. I think it's timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I see it. And I'm just watching it. I'm just like, damn, yeah. They're not they're not they're not joking around and they they obviously seem a bit more clinical than last year, because I'm seeing their score lines. And they're not mucking around. I've seen six, I've seen three, I've seen four. I'm just like, you know what, fair play. But everyone, like, it's one of the ones, you know, you could be about to play them, you know what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to play out. They're going to try to play through the third. And the fact they're still doing it and just shows that they're, they're, they're a serious team, man. They're a serious team. They really are. And they don't change. They could be 3-0 down and they're still trying to play out. You know, They could be 1-0 down and they're not going to, Hoof it into the box. So, well, yeah, they're, they're doing really well at the moment. Um, they signed, they signed the pick Kieran Lofthouse, which I think is a great addition as well, you know. Yeah, for sure. And in depth to the squad. Mm. They're really well at work. I'll see them. No, for sure. And Wes, I want to touch on, obviously, South End's predicament now. Um, obviously, we've all seen the points deductions, the emergency signings, the 15 players at the manager's disposal. Talk us through the mindset of your club at the moment. Like, because from an outside perspective, a lot of us are thinking like, how are they doing this? Like, what is it about you guys that you've managed to eradicate the tempo induction and you're off the foot of the table so quickly? Um, see as that. It's so funny because you obviously see how people are talking about us from the outside. But like, from being totally honest, you have to understand like, there's certain things you can't control. Like, we can't control certain things. So, um, our gaffer and our staff always say, it, like, control what you can. And obviously, we know we can control what happens on the pitch. All the off-the-pitch stuff, only so much we can do, do you know what I'm saying? That's if we can even do anything, to be honest. So, I think it's got to a stage where it's been going on for so long. It's got to a stage now. Us as a team, we're like, cool, we can't do nothing about that, but we can do something about this on the pitch. So I think that's obviously brought us together. And where where we ain't got many players, we kind of we kind of knew that like, it was funny as well because we know that everyone doubted us. So that was like another kick up the ass because we knew that people were saying, nah, they only got so many players, they're not going to do well, they're not this, that, the other. So that was another bit of motivation. So all this noise that we're hearing, 
we're just taking it and using it as motivation just to go again, go again, prove people wrong, prove people wrong. And then you're seeing now people are starting to like be like, oh, maybe they're not going to be as bad, this, that, and the other. But all that noise, we're just using it as motivation, man. But yeah, it is tough. It is tough. It's not easy. But at the same time, it has brought us together. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's it's a weird one. But yeah, it's all you can do, man. Control what you can. Oh. You know, I I admire I admire what's going on. Obviously, I've had conversations with viewers about it, and you know what? Yeah, I can, I, I can only imagine how close it must have brought the group together. You know, the players and the staff. You know, because um, the, these moments are moments that you look back on, and you and we all know how it ends, in it. You're gonna come, everyone. You're gonna come out the other side, bro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So so um. These moments are, but the, the the times where you look back in six months' time, in a year's time, and it's like, oh, remember when we, but well, yeah, we come out the other side and we went away to yeah. so, so and we beat them, but we're up against it, like you know. Um, I think, I think, I think these are the times, and and it's great that your manager is telling you guys to control the controllables. I think it's, I think that's very important, and you guys are definitely doing that, and. Jamal mentioned that like, you're already off the foot of the table with a 10-point deduction. goes to show you guys are really going about your business, going about your business, man, and, and, and it's mm. great to see you, bro. And we, I mean, oh. we, yeah, we tweeted that in the week about where you would be without that 10-point deduction. And as you said, that adversity, and sometimes adversity brings people closer together. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you, Rez. I'm surprised at how I beat you are. I'm surprised at how you laughed about it. And I think, like, I thought it might have been suffocating. Like when you guys heard about the ten point deduction, now I'm thinking, why well, did you not just start laughing in the changing room and say, oh, "The mind allow, let's see what we can do." Or how was that for you? Because and is it harder for you when you're go one nil down? Is it like, oh, do you know what? It's all going against us. Let's just forward. Or how is that for you in that changing? No, I can't lie. That ten point deduction, it's tough because especially I think. First five games, we had won three and lost two. So, like, we are doing, like, you know what I'm saying, reasonably be well. But all these things, it's just like, you're just getting knocked down, innit? It's like you're trying to stand up. Someone's just punching you, just going down. But you just got to get back up, though. That's just the truth of the matter. Like, I can't explain it. Like, like what are we going to do? Like, do you know what I'm saying? If you don't get back up, what are we going to do? We're not going to quit. So, we might as well give it what we've got, like. Any bit you got left, give it what you got, like, because that's all I can really say. Because it's like, don't, okay, let me not, don't get it wrong, it's annoying, like, it hurts, and that uh, we be in the change room sometimes, like, damn, like, this is where we could be, this, that, and the other. But the realism, like, the bigger picture, there's nothing we can do about that. So we better just try to get some wins ASAP because that's all we can do, isn't it? That's what we can control. So we better get some wins ASAP. But then, in terms of like when you go one or down, um, I don't know about other people, but when I'm on a pitch, all that other stuff don't really cross my mind. So if I'm on a pitch, I'm just thinking win this game that I'm playing right now. So I'm not really thinking about deductions and all these other things. I'm just thinking we we're on the pitch right now, and we have to win. So I don't feel no different type of way if the situation was fine if I went one or down rather than now do you know what I'm saying so it just man goes one or down I think the same way like you got a you know what I'm saying you got a game to win so let's try to win it in the moment so and and I think your fans as well deserve a lot of credit because they're still coming yeah. with uh, my next door neighbour's a South End fan and he's always talking how highly um, he can't speak highly enough of the players and it seems as though you guys have got the right characters in your dressing room, you know. Do you know one yeah. player I really enjoy in your, guy, in your dressing room is Ralph. I love playing against him. I love his game. And then you've got um, is it Noor Hussein? I'm saying yeah, no, no, yeah. Hard well as well. So you've actually got a solid team. It's just that you're just in a team that is, is in disarray at the moment at the top. But no, I love I love what you're saying about um, how you're how you're going about your business, man. Um, hats off to you guys for real. Cheers, man. Um, but yeah, let's get back to it. Um, Chesterfield, again, coming from behind to win. I'm not sure how they keep doing it. I'm starting to think they're just doing it for banter now because they go behind every single game and manage to win. Um, Barry Mandeville and Jacobs um, 
on the goal scorers on the day, beating Willstone. Um, Femi, talk to me about that game and also Rochdale as well, beating Dorkin. Um, Pybus got sent off, but it banks down there when um, a late Ian Henderson goal as well was got them the winner. So talk to us about that one. Or yeah, two. I'll start with the Rochdale win at Dorkin. Um, yeah, good week, good week for Rochdale. Obviously, we played them during the week. We know they're a good, decent side, you know, and they've gone to Dorkin and they've got another result. And um, it's great because it was two games on it was two games on the road as well. It was a rushed away in it? Yes. Yeah, away. So it's, it's it's two games on the road and and to pick up four on the road in a week coming down south from up north twice is it, it, big mm. for you. Um Ebanks Landell late goal. two of them were late goals. I know Ebanks Landell was a late goal and then and then Ian Henderson's winner was in a dying moment. But no, credit to them, credit to them. With the other result, what was the other result you told me to speak on? Chesterfield, uh, Wolstone. Yeah, Chesterfield. <sighs> These late goals, yeah. Like, they're doing it, isn't it? And they're shutting everyone up. Like, let's let's have it right. But the question is, everyone's just saying, how sustainable is it, isn't it? Like, like can they keep doing this for 46 games? Because... They've 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 scored so many winners in the in the dying moments this season, you know, and and we all know it's a tough place to go though. Just but imagine like you need to understand though, this new stoppage time, yeah, at Chesterfield. So you got eight thousand fans. <gasps> then you look at the you look at the four and you put something <laughs> this additional time like. <laughs> And then they start roaring. Uh, Just put yourself roaring. in that position. And you're drawing yeah. 1-1. Or you're losing 1-0. I mean, or you're winning 1-0. Like, just put yourself in that position. It's it's kind of sticky. Not a joke. Like, like, Not a joke. You know what I mean? And you've really got to have some serious cojones to, to really <laughs> hold it down. Like, to really hold it down, you know. And so far, no one has managed to do it. You know, mm. but... I've got to give credit to Wellstone. They go in there and they actually go in there and go into teams. Uh, they're going to Chesterfield, the likes of Chesterfield. Now, they, it shows how far they've come that they they go there and they're competing, you know. But yeah, with Chesterfield, I just feel like, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, they just, they, they need to maybe find a, a more sustainable way of, of getting these wins on board. But who am I to talk? They've done it 11 games now. So, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, and Wes, I'm so sorry that we've had to get you on when we both lost um, the day the day before. But that's football, isn't it? So obviously, Bournemouth lost two one to Aldershot, and you guys are down at South Bend at home lost. Both of us at home, to be fair. You guys lost to um, Fylde. Um, that man Harry Caldwell popping up with a goal, but it wasn't enough to get you on point or a win. Um, how did you see your game? Talk us through it. Um, what went wrong? Um, and just, yeah, what are your thoughts on the game? Um, disappointing to lose at home because I think we're quite good at home. You know what I mean? I think we're quite solid. But um, in terms of the actual game, how it played out, I think, wow, they came they came with a game plan. Like, I think, I think they were doing man-to-man, even looking back now. I think it was kind of man-to-man. It was kind of mad. I just remembered, yeah. I think they'll do a man to man. So they had a little game plan. And to be fair to them, that was about us. I don't think we was really at our like best, best how we have been like recently. And to be fair to them, they got some attacking threats. But as it is right now, we, we got no defenders, bro. That York game we had last week messed us up. We literally barely can, we barely got any defenders, like really and truly. Like, I don't know if you might know Cav, he's playing like centre back at the moment. You got, yeah, Cav Mani playing centre back. We got like two wingers playing wing back. Like it's mad, but yeah, to be fair to Far, they had a game plan, like a little man to man press. And to be fair to them, they they were they were that's what I mean about this league as well. The table, the, don't ever look at the table before you play anyone, bro. You see the table, you think they're bottom. It's just a lie. Like you have games, you play the team that's like fifth, and it's like easier than the team that's apparently meant to be at twenty second. And that, like, 
but yeah, they were good. And I'll say, yeah, we weren't really at it, but we know that. But the, I guess the good thing is that we can play again on Tuesday, do you know what I mean? So we'll be better, we'll be better for sure. I, I like that point where, it's where you said, do you know what? Don't even look at the table because it's so true, man. Like, I feel like, yeah, teams down there, like, you're. What you think is gonna happen doesn't happen. <laughs> Never. And, and and then the teams that are fifth, it's like maybe you'll play a team that's up in the team and you'll be like, hold on, I thought they'll they'll be a little bit better than that. Like I, 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 yeah. I know Yeah. I know, I know how it goes and it's on the day. Anyone can be anyone. Literally. The division is on the day. Like I feel like every team in this division is 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 good. You know, on the day, so you just gotta make sure that it's your day more than other teams most times, most weeks. Like, facts, facts. That's all it is. Facts. Yeah. And and moving on to our result, them. Obviously, I was watching from the from the stands, being injured, but it was a tough one to take. Obviously, they went one nil up in the first half, and you really wanna come out the block flying, but unfortunately, you did it quite early. But I thought from there, from then on, in the second half, from about. Uh, 55 onwards, it was all us. Angelo popped up for his first goal of the season. I thought him and Erica came on and really changed the game. Um, but talk to me from your point of view and how you saw it. Um, yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, Jamal. It's definitely a game of two halves. We came out of the block slow, and you know what? We can't, we can't give a team, um, we can't give a team 45 minutes. You know, we can't give a team that. And I feel like that's what we gave all the shot. We gave them 45 minutes to implement their game plan. And to be fair, they they came, they done well. They done really well. And they, they went, they took the lead one they were. I'm not disheartened up one bit because, you know, there was there was there was um a lot of great, great things that we did in the second half and and also with the introduction of Erica Sosa being back from injury, Angelo Balanta back from injury popping up with a goal we showed that look when our players come back from come back to full fitness we're going to be a really really good team you know we still got the likes of yourself that's going to come back we still got the likes of David that's going to come back Mo and Quez they're still a, they're still a little while away but we still got them to look forward to it and they're going to be like new signings when they come back you know so I feel like yeah like that that like now our players are starting to come back. It's like okay, cool. Bring on the season now. That's how I actually felt, and I felt I felt that on Saturday the way we were playing on Saturday second half. Like I was actually looking at it and thinking, ah, oh, this is what it could be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. I'm not. I'm not disheartened. I'm not disheartened one bit at all. Like I know it's like yeah, cool. When we get this, when we get our everyone back from injury, get the right person on the pitch, there's no way we won't deliver on results, you know. So yeah, all the shot won the mm. day. Congratulations to them for winning the day. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you got any got any tips? We got them on Tuesday, man. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, <laughs> bro. Well, I don't know. What, <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you want to know? With it, they three five two thing. Like, what you, like, <laughs> nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. But, um, your manager probably has all the information already. I'll be honest. Yeah, legit. Uh, no. the managers in this league do their due diligence. You know what I mean. So mm. he'll probably tell you everything. He'll probably tell you everything. But if you want to know anything, off, off, <laughs> off camera, we'll talk, man. Wait, 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 wait until off. It only needs to wait, wait until off camera. Listen, Wes, they're a very good team. That's not. There's no. There's no qualms about it. They try to play out when they can. But I felt as though when we full press them. They, that's that's when they went back to front. So it's kind of like disrupting their rhythm. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so if you can disrupt yeah. their rhythm, that's when we got a lot of our joy. So that's that's one point. And I know you're a little bit of a ratter as well. As much as you've got the little silky touches and that. <laughs> so, but no, to echo what Femi said, look, um, we've got we've got more than enough in the building as it stands um, to, to do something in this league. It's just about moments in this game, you know. And as long as we, we all stick together and um, which we will do, which we have done. Obviously, the gaffer's always got a plan to implement. We'll stick to his his plans as well. We'll be fine, man. We'll be fine. So that's a that's a roundup of the game, the games. Um, but my my question to you, Wes, is this now. I want a little bit of advice now. You're still quite a young player yourself, but I want advice from you for, for players that are coming up in the game. Um, because as I said, 
Have you got any routines? Have you got a certain game plan that you stick to for yourself? Obviously, you played near enough 200 games now in your career. So, any advice for, for some of the youngsters watching? What, in terms of, like, how to, like, be the best of them, best version of themselves? Themselves, get the best out of themselves. What you felt you would have um, maybe benefited from coming up if someone told you what you've learned in your time? I would actually say, like, looking after your body, you know. That's yeah. what, I think that's such a big thing, like, just little stuff like stretching, diet, do you know what I'm saying? I think those kind of things are actually so important. And I'm I'm learning that now myself, like, how important those things are, because when I was younger, I can't lie, my dad used to be a mess, you know. Oh, <laughs> I oh, that used to be a mess. I think it's getting better now. Yeah. Like, these little things are important. Like even like stretching. I think stretching is a big, big thing as well. Like literally. And just like like injury prevention stuff, man. I think that stuff is so important because I think the best thing you can have is being available. Like availability, you know what I'm saying? If you're always fit and ready to go, and you you might know how the league is, you've got Saturday, Tuesday for about four weeks. It's it's crazy. But like if you imagine you're playing, you know you can get through that playing every three, four days and your body feeling good, I'll say that would be my advice. Still look after your body, man. Nothing beats that for me personally. Look after your body. Do you know why, you know why I like that? Yeah, it's because it's like, it's so true first and foremost. So true first and foremost. And secondly, it's like we're building an ecosystem in, in on this Beyond 92 and it's like, when we've asked different players for different advice, they've all said different things. So I, I really like the angle that you've come at as well because that is really, really important. Was like being available for games, it's it's good. So I really, I really like that, and I really like the fact that like everyone's just touching every, and it's not intentional, but every player that's come on has said something completely different to the other, which is good. Mm. And turn on to my second part, favourite part of the show, is the word of the day. Femi, do you want to start us off with our word of the day? Wes, I'll give you some time to think. Yeah, my word of the word of the week is going to be greatness, you know. Um, look, this, let's just try and be as great as we can, in it? You know what I mean? Now, greatness is not looking at another man. Someone else's greatness is not your greatness. You know, your greatness is your greatness and you know what you need to do. I feel like everyone knows what they need to do in order to, to have a good week or or be successful. Your body tells you, your mind tells you these things, isn't it? And you might neglect, you might neglect um, one or two of the things that your mind or your body told you to do. Prime example, you just said, oh, I might need to go and stretch. I can't bother to stretch. I can't bother to ask. No, nah, let's just be as great as we can be in it. Like let's 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 make that conscious effort to do whatever comes to our mind, you know, and, and just and just take action. Take action. Less thought. Less thought, more action. Like, you know what I mean? So that's my word of the week, greatness. Just be as great as you can be. Be as great. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Just be as great as you can be. I love that. I love that. It's, it's, I like that. Don't measure yourself against anyone else. I like that, Femi. I think that's a great plan. Wes, you got one for us? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say um it's kind of two, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna use confidence. Oh my god, that's my word, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say confidence and you see with that, yeah. I think um for me, why that word is just key because when you're when you're on the pitch for me, it's just like doing everything with confidence. I feel like when you do things like with your chest and confidence, more time it, it happens to come off, you know. I swear that I don't know why, but like say someone plays it into me and I want to play it first time, but I just do it with like a bit of like, you know what I mean? Like a bit of you know what I'm saying? I, I tend to feel like it comes off. And my thing is, um, it's happened to me a couple of times, like, you know when you're playing a game, it's early, nothing's really going on, and then, like, you might do something good, 
Now you're feeling like confident. You're feeling good. So now for the rest of that game now, because you've got that confidence, you start playing better than you was like 20 yeah. minutes ago. And there's no other reason but that like, you're just having confidence in yourself. So I'll say that like, just when you're doing something, just do it with confidence, man. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That was my word, but... um. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change my words so we're not going to two. Um, my word is hours. So I'm thinking of time, hours. And I put something on my Instagram yesterday about trying to use every available moment to improve myself in some capacity. So I don't want to waste any time. And don't get me wrong, rest is important as working. Femi always says that. Fem, what's the quote you say about rest? Rest and recovery is a key for optimum performance. Oh, that's the way you see that's that's how I use Femi you know always. whenever I need a little gem I just <laughs> cry about a friend. but yeah hours it's literally like um whether I'm reading whether I'm sleeping whether I'm working out in the gym um whether I'm watching a podcast I try to do as much as I can so um just to improve my mental capacity or just to improve my body in, in a way that's gonna push me towards a goal you know especially as when you're injured it's so easy to get bogged down with the negatives are oh, yeah that everyone's gonna have to train and you're just in the gym on your own for saying grey walls looking at you so just trying to be present in each moment and use every single moment available to me um to improve um so that's my word so we've got confidence for Wes greatness for Femi and hours for myself um and is there anything else you want to touch on Fem? Yeah do you know what it just randomly come to my head you know um Wes what, yeah. what are you running in the 90, bro? What do you say? What are you running in the 90? About like how many kilometers? Bro, we don't even have GPS at the moment, you know? Oh, yeah. Going on. yeah, we don't even have that. I want, I want to talk, I want to start introducing. That's fine. Listen, bro, I, that's, this is what I love about this show. It's so authentic that we don't get the generic answers. Like, once again, Wes just showed us something that's going on at South End. They don't have GPS at the moment. Now, Players love looking at their stats. Players love looking at their data. But when you've got a team that is all in, and similar to something that Ian Watson said about when his bus broke down last um, the other day, when you've got a team all in, they're not caring about the little things about GPS and they're not caring about, I don't know, maybe a meal, getting um, a lunch or getting your kit washed. It's just everybody's hands on deck pushing in the same direction. So I love that, man. I am yeah, in there. We'll keep that's the reason I'm asking the question, bro. Yeah, we'll keep it in there. We'll keep Where's it in they going? Next coming maybe, out, bro. Maybe stats won't even sponsor them and friend them. We never know. Yeah, they might allow us still. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but all right. Well, Fem, anything else that you got you want to add to, at the end of the show? No, man. Where's I'm not going to lie. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for blessing us with this episode. Thank you for being you. My brothers, man. Thank you. Obviously, look, we all know it's... it's, it's it's a rough period for for um, everyone at South End, but the fact that you're in good spirits goes to show that it's a show that I can imagine that you guys are are, are keeping the faith and and the showing on the pitch, you know. And mm. I'm sure that you guys will get out of this soon, and it'll be a, it'll be a situation like I said that you guys will laugh at in a few in it, you know what I mean? In a few months, in a year's time. Yeah. Situation. You know what? I got one more thing, Wes. I got one more. Yeah. thing. Everyone that knows me knows. Finances is like a real passion of mine, like how to build wealth and how to accumulate wealth and keep wealth. So my question to you is this. You see when the payday delays come, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah right. God. When the payday delays come, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but what's your thought process and what? Because I'm not sure if I'll be speed dialing the director, I'll be speed dialing the general, like, bro, all my money. I've got kids to feed. Like, what's, what goes through your mind? How is everybody, like, what, how does it work? Talk to me. Uh, no, hey, it's, it's not easy. I like, like, it's not easy. It's like, I don't even know how much I can say on this one. Uh, you know, know it's it's not easy. Easy. It's not no, easy. I won't I won't, I won't, I won't push. I won't push. <laughs> but, but hats off to you guys, man, because I don't think there's a lot of um there's a lot of players that could do it, man. I know I know Hobson left and Ray left. Um and hats off to you guys for sticking in there, man. You're doing it for the love of the game and a love of a club and for yourself. So 
we'll leave it there. Um, I don't want you to get <laughs> any calls <laughs> in your phones. But no, honestly, as Benny said, thank you for coming on. Thank you for blessing us. Love, man. Um, love, love. Uh, really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Love, love. Guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, show a friend. Please push this show as much as you can. We really appreciate it. And keep rocking with us. But where's absolute pleasure, my bro. Stay blessed. Love, love, love.